Hi everyone. Um, notes 4.5 are on quadratic relations of the form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So um, for these notes, we're going to take notes 4.3, 4.4, and we're just going to put everything together. So let's take a look at what it says right here. It says so far we've looked at properties for quadratic relations, y equals x squared. Uh, this y equals x squared is just your standard parabola. Okay, y equals ax squared, y equals x squared plus k, and y equals x minus h squared. Okay, so um, we've also discovered what happens to the graph when we change the values of a, k, and h. So let's just remind ourselves what happens if we change uh, the value of a. So if we change the value of a, it'll either um, stretch the graph vertically. So um, and if it's a vertical stretch, it'll look narrower. And remember, this happens if a is greater than one, okay? Um, or it will stretch or, or sorry, compress vertically. And remember, that means that it's going to look um, wider. And that happens if a is between 0 and 1. So what this means right here is a is between 0 and 1. And sometimes when a is negative, it will also do a, re a reflection or a flip in the x-axis. And this happens if A is negative, okay? Um, if you remember, the K value shifts your um, graph up or down. So the K value is a vertical shift, okay? And if you remember, the H value uh, shifts it left or right. So H is a horizontal shift. Okay, now it's going to all get put together. Instead of having ax squared separate, the x squared plus k, k separate, and the x minus h squared separate, now it's going to get put all together. So the effects of changes in a, h, and k. Using properties from the other relations we've studied, fill in the blanks below. For any quadratic uh, relation of the form, y equals a times x minus h squared, plus k relative to the graph of y equals x squared. Remember, this is your standard parabola. The value of a determines the orientation and the shape of the parabola. Okay, so what that means is if A is positive, the parabola is going to open up. If A is negative, the parabola is going to open down. If, a, if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then the graph is um, going to be vertically stretched. In other words, it's going to look skinny. So we're pretty much saying the same thing, but we're just making sure you really get all of this information down. And then if A is between 0, negative 1, and 1, so in other words, um, if A is between negative 1 and 1, the graph is vertically compressed. and that will make it look wider, okay? Now, um, if you remember right here, if uh, k is positive, the vertex shifts um, up, and if k is negative, the vertex shifts down, okay? And then if h is positive, the vertex shifts, now I'm gonna put down that it's gonna shift left, um, but technically right here, um, 
we are just going to do the opposite sign of what we see inside of here, okay? So um, if H is positive, it's going to shift left. And if H is negative, it's going to shift right. Remember, these ones are the opposite. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Coordinates of the vertex can easily be found by looking at the equation of the relation. So if we have a relation in the form y equals x squared plus k, let's think about what our vertex is always going to be, okay? So here's where things get a little bit um, trickier right here. So if we have right here, um, uh, let's take a look at what it's going to look like on Desmos, okay? So I'm going to go to Desmos. And I'm going to look at a couple examples that we have here. So my first example is y equals x squared plus 3. So I'm going to type that in, y equals x squared plus 3. And Desmos is nice. It'll tell me the vertex right away. And it tells me the vertex is 0, comma, 3. So right here, let's write down that our vertex here is 0, comma, 3. Okay, now what if our equation says y equals x squared minus 11? So let's change this to from a plus 3 to minus 11. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to look at my vertex and it says my vertex is at 0, negative 11. So this here means my vertex is 0, comma, negative 11. So here our k value was 3. Here, our k value was negative 11. So that means that our vertex is always going to be at 0, comma, k if it's in this format right here, okay? Um, now, let's take a look at the next example. y equals x minus 2 squared. Okay, so if I take a look at this right here, this time my vertex is at 2, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that in here, that our vertex here is at 2, comma, 0, okay? And our vertex for this one is at positive, not, or x, sorry, our equation says x plus 9 squared. So let's take a look at what we have for our vertex. Our vertex here is negative 9. So we're going to say here that our vertex is negative 9, 0, okay? So let's take a look at what we have here. Um, our, our um, h value here is positive 2 because this says x minus h, so this is going to be x minus 2, so h is 2. Remember, it's just going to be the, um, the opposite. This minus here means it's going to be the opposite sign. Okay, and then here, this h value here, it says x plus 9, uh, to the power of 2. So that means that h is negative 9, okay? So uh, whatever our h value is, that's always going to be my uh, part of my vertex. So here it's going to be h comma 0. Here it's h comma 0. Okay, now here we're going to put everything together. So what I strongly suggest is that you guys put stars next to this one because this one's incredibly important. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what we have here. So uh, in this example right here, y equals 2 times x minus 7 squared minus 4. So let's go ahead and type that in. it minus 4 and let's take a look at what we have for our vertex so here our vertex is 7 comma negative 4 so let's go ahead and write that down that this right here is 7 comma negative 4 and remember um, the opposite sign still applies to this piece right here so that means right here we can say that the H was positive 7, and we can say that the k was negative 4, and notice how the coordinate of the vertex was at 7, negative 4. So I'm going to make a prediction for this one right here, and I'm going to predict that the h value is negative 1, because it's the opposite sign, and that the k value is negative 2. So my prediction is that my vertex is going to be at negative 1, negative 2.
So let's go ahead and graph this one out and see what it looks like. So negative 3 times x plus 1 squared minus 2. And when I take a look at what my vertex is, it's negative 1, negative 2. So I'm good to go. I've got the right answer for that one. Now, for this one right here, I'm going to say that the h value is positive 3 and that the k value is um, positive 2, which means that my vertex is going to be at 3, 2, regardless of what this a value is. So this a value could be anything at all. It doesn't matter. And I'm still going to have a vertex at 3, 2. So let's go ahead and try that one out. So um, right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a times x minus 3 squared um, plus 2. And I'm going to add a slider for a. And this is going to tell us that a can be anything that we want it to be. And our vertex was at 3, 2. Now watch, watch what happens to where your vertex is. No matter what the a value is right here, I can change the a value as much as I want. It's only going to change how wide or how skinny my graph is, whether it's opening up or opening down. It doesn't matter, but my vertex is still at the exact same place, so my vertex is still 3, 2, just like we figured out in our note over here. So we know that this is going to be 3, 2. Let's go ahead and try it for this last one right here. So taking a look at this one right here, I can see that my h value is negative 5. I can see that my k value is positive 8. So looking at that, I can tell that my vertex is negative 5, 8. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Desmos and see what it's going to tell us. So here, I'm going to type in x plus 5 squared. And then here I'm going to type in plus 8. And my vertex here is at negative 5, 8, exactly like how we predicted it. And watch what happens to where the vertex is located when I change my a and my, uh, my a to either positive or negative, large or small, it doesn't matter. It's still at negative 5, 8. Therefore, I can conclude um, that the vertex will always happen at h comma k. Okay, and again, like I said, this right here is incredibly important. All right, so now let's take a look at what we have here. We're going to talk about how to use the vertex to, and something called the step method to easily graph out our functions, okay, or graph out our, our parabolas, excuse me. So let's take a look at what we have here. Consider the graph of the basic quadratic function y equals x squared. So I would use Desmos to get these values, but hopefully at this point uh, you recognize that negative 4 squared is 16, negative 3 squared is 9. This should be 4, this should be 1, this should be 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. So this is the standard parabola, just like we've always looked at, okay? And um, let's go ahead and graph out our parabola. So if I have a point at negative 4, 16, I'm going to go to the left 4 and up 16, and I'm going to put my dot there. My next one's at negative 3, 9. The next one is at negative 2, 4. The next one is at negative 1, 1. Then I've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and lastly, I have 416 right here. So here is my parabola, my standard parabola right here. Okay? And uh, based on the standard parabola, uh, we're going to look and see some really important information that we need to use um, for this question or for, this, for the next um, little bit. So if you take a look right here, the first thing that it's asking us to do is to find out what um, the vertex is. So if I take a look at this right here, I can see where my vertex is. And my vertex is right here. It's at 0, 0. Okay, so my vertex is 0, 0. Now the direction of the opening is up. It's opening up. And I know this because A is positive. Okay, 
So then it says, what's the step pattern? How do you move from point to point starting from the vertex? So this right here is really, really, really important for you to know. So if you take a look right here, the step pattern, every time I go over one right here, the first to get to the first coordinate, I'm going up one. Okay, now for the next one to go over one, I'm going up one, two, three. So here, I'm going up three. And let me color code this in a different color so we can kind of see this a little bit better. So right here, this one, we're going over one and up three, okay? For our next one, when I go over one, right here, I'm going up by one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then for my last one, when I go over one, I'm going up by, guess what you think it should be? It's seven. So hopefully you notice the pattern. It goes up one, up three, up five, up seven. Okay, and that's a really important pattern for us to know. Now, um, for the next one right here, it says consider the quadratic relation to y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that my h value here is positive 3, because remember we always do the opposite sign. The k value is positive 2, which means that my vertex is at 3, 2. And the vertex is always going to go in the middle of my table of values here. So uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. I'm going to put my vertex right in the middle. So I'm going to put it in the fourth one. So that way I can have three above and three below. So I'm going to put three, two here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go up by ones for my x values. Then I'm going to open up Desmos. We'll make this um, so that we can kind of see this a little bit better. So I'm going to open up my Desmos and I'm going to um, make a table of values in Desmos to get this information here. So uh, right here, I'm going to make a table. I'm going to delete the one here. I'm going to type in 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 2. And then here, I'm going to type in um, all of my, my values. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So taking a look at this right here, I've got my table of values. I've got 20, 10, 4, 2, 4, 10, and 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in that information right here. So we're going to say this is 20. 10, 4, 2, 4, 10, and 20. And I'm going to go ahead and graph that information out, okay? So right here, I've got 0, 20. I'm going to put it all the way up here, okay? I've got 1, 10. I've got 2, 4. I've got uh, 3, 2. This here is my vertex. I've got 4, 4. Sorry, let's move this down to where it belongs. I've got 4, 4. I've got 5, 10. And then lastly, I've got 6 all the way up to 20. And this right here is my parabola that I'm taking a look at. Try your best to make a nice smooth curve. It's a little bit more difficult on the computer. Try to get it to go through your coordinates so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's fill in our information here. So here, our vertex is 3, 2. We already figured out that it's 3, 2. Okay, the direction of the opening is still up, and now we're going to find our step pattern. So this time, when I went over by 1, I'm actually going up by 2. Okay, um, for the next one, um, instead of going over by 1 and up by 3, what's happening is we are going over by 1 
And here I'm going up by one, two, three, four, five, six. So this right here is up six. Okay. Um, for the next one, what ended up happening is I went over one and it went from 10 to 20 right here. So it went up by 10. So we're going to say here, this went up by 10. Okay, and I can tell you guys right now that the next one, even though it's not graphed out in front of us, when it went over by 1, it went up by 14. So what I want you to do is take a look at what we have here versus what we have here. This went up by 1, 3, 5, 7, so it's every odd number. These are not odd numbers, but if you notice right here, this value right here is equal to 2 times this one right here that we got here. This value here is equal to 2 times the 3 we got here. So we're doubling this, um, these amounts right here over here. It's getting doubled. And the reason why this is getting doubled, so let's just write this out, 2 times 5 and then this one right here is 2 times 7. And the reason why this is getting doubled right here is because of this 2 is pretty much just your A value that we have here. Okay, so that's where it's coming from. And then this right here is just your typical step pattern. Okay, so we're going to learn how to apply this information to actually graphing out um, parabolas that are of this form. All right, uh, one more uh, piece of information that we need to add on to uh, what we have here. So we're going to apply everything now to um, actually uh, graphing out uh, our parabolas. So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify and plot the vertex. Once we do that, we're going to determine the step pattern. So we're going to put here, we're going to find the step pattern, okay? Once we do that, we are going to uh, plot the step points. And it's really important that we take into consideration that it's 1 times A, 3 times A, 5 times A, 7 times A. Because remember, the step pattern is 1, 3, 5, 7, but it depends on um, what the A value is. Okay, same thing here, 1A, 3A, 5A, 7A, etc. Then we're going to reflect each point across the axis of symmetry. And once we do that, it's super easy. Um, we're going to just draw a smooth curve between our points. Okay, so let's take a look at our example that we have here. Y equals negative 3 times X plus 1 squared plus K or plus 6. So remember, let's just write this out here, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And let's identify all of the values that we have here. So we can see that a is going to be negative 3. We can say that h is going to be uh, negative 1, because remember it's always the opposite sign, and we can see that k is going to be 6. So based on that right here, um, don't forget that our vertex is always h comma k, okay? So based on that, I can see that my h is negative 1, my k is 6, so my vertex is negative 1, 6, okay? Now, because a is negative right here, the direction of my opening is going to be down. It's opening down right here. Okay, and then for the step pattern, remember the step pattern is always going to be 1a, 3a, 5a, 7a, etc. So based on that, um, if a is negative 3, my step pattern is going to be 1 times negative 3, which is negative 3. Then I'm going to do 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. Then I'm going to do 5 times negative 3, which is negative 15. So this right here is going to be my step pattern. So let's go ahead and do this, uh, graph out this information that we have here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot out the vertex. So my vertex is at negative 1, 6. 
okay? Now that I've done that, I'm going to um, go ahead and do my step pattern right here. Sorry, let's, I want to make this uh, black up here. So negative 1, 6. I know it's going down, and I can tell that it's going down also because my step pattern is negative. So since my step pattern is um, uh, negative 3 for my first one right here, what that means is I'm going to go over 1 and down 3. So 1, 2, 3. And this right here is going to be my first coordinate. Okay? For the next one right here, my next step is uh, negative 9. So I'm going to go over 1. So let's just do this so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm going to go over 1. And this time I'm going to go down 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this right here is my down 9. Okay? So if you can see here, this is negative 3. If you can see here, this is negative 9. There's no way I have enough room for um, going to, uh, over 1 and down 15. That's sufficient. Now I just need to do the same thing on the other side. So here, this vertex is always going to be my line, uh, where my line of symmetry is, right? So this um, vertical line here is my axis of symmetry. So this point right here is one away to the right. So this point over here is one away to the left. So I've got this point right here. And then to go uh, on my axis of symmetry. So let me draw it in. Maybe it'll help me out to see it a little bit better. So for this point over here, it's two away, one, two. So I'm going to go two away, one, two. So here's where my other point is going to be. Then I'm just going to connect all of my dots. And that is my parabola. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one that we have here. So for the next one we have here, we can see that um, the A value here is one half right? The h value here is positive 3 and the k value here is negative 2. So based on that, my vertex is always hk, so my vertex is 3, negative 2. And because a is positive this time, it's going to be opening up. So for my step pattern right here, um, my first value right here is going to be 1 times 1 half which is pretty much just 0 0.5. So this right here is 0 0.5, okay? The next step is going to be 3 times 1 half, which is um, 1.5 when I do that multiplication, okay? The next step that I have is 5 times 0 0.5, or 5 times a half, which is 2.5. And then the last step that I have here is 7 times 0 0.5, and I could keep going, um, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to get enough points to be able to graph out my, uh, my parabola. So when I multiply 7 by 0 0.5, I get 3.5, so I've got my step pattern here. So let's go ahead and graph out this information right here. So 3, negative 2 is where my vertex is, so I'm going to go to the right 3 and down 2. And my axis of symmetry cuts through where my vertex is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in where my axis of symmetry is right here. And um, I have my step pattern. So my step pattern is saying that I'm going to, let me just um, zoom in on this a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. So my step pattern is saying that I'm going to go um, to the right by one, and then we've got up one half. So our first one is a half. So to the right one and up one half. Okay. My next step pattern says I'm going to go to the right one and up by one and a half. So here's a half, and then here's one. Okay. The next one is say I'm going to go to the right by one and up by two and a half. So here's one, here's two and a half. And then the last step pattern is telling me, the last number in my step pattern is telling me that I'm going to go to the right by one and up by three and a half. So here's a half, one, two, three. And those are the points that I'm going to have on the right side of my parabola. Now I'm just going to reflect it over. So this point right here is one away from the axis, so my new point is also one away from the axis. This point right here is 
one, two away from the axis, so my new point is also two away from the axis. This point right here is one, two, three away from my axis, so my other reflection, my reflected point is one, two, three away from the axis. And then this point right here is one, two, three, four away from the axis, so my new point is one, two, three, four away from the axis. Then I'm just going to connect my dots with a nice smooth curve. And this is going to be my parabola. Okay? All right, so now let's complete our information um, on this table right here. So let's just get some practice to make sure we understand all of this stuff right here. In this equation right here, we know that A is 1 because there's an invisible 1 right here. We know that H is positive 2, and we know that K is positive 1. So therefore, our vertex is going to be 2, 1, okay? Remember, our step pattern is always going to be 1A, 3A, 5A, 7a, so on and so forth. So right here, if a is 1, 1 times 1 is just simply 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 1 is 5. 7 times 1 is 7, so on and so forth. Okay? And because a is positive, my parabola is opening up. Okay? For the next one that we have here, we can see that a is negative 4. We can see that h is also negative 4, because remember we always do the opposite sign. And we can see that k is positive 64. So that means that my vertex, remember our vertex is always h comma k. So that means that my vertex is negative 4, 64. Our step pattern here is going to be 1 times a, and a is negative 4. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Then I'm going to do 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. Then I'm going to do 5 times negative 4, which is negative 20. Then I'm going to do 7 times negative 4, which is negative 28, so on and so forth. And this time, because the A is negative, we know that it's going to open down. Okay? And then in our last example here, um, it opens down so that we know, so that means that we know that A is negative. Okay, our step pattern is 1 times a, and we get negative 1. 3 times a, we get negative 3. 5 times a is negative 5. So here we can tell that a is negative 1. Okay, our vertex here is 20, negative 10, so we can say h is 20, and we can see that k is negative 10. And if the format is generally 1, or y equals a times x minus h, squared plus k, then we can see here that our equation is going to say, say y equals a is negative 1 times x. Here we know h is 20, and in the equation it's always the opposite sign, so we're going to say minus 20 squared, and then plus k, k is negative 10, so we're going to say plus negative 10, or just minus 10. And that's what we need to do for um, to find out what the equations are. I apologize, I know this video is very long, but it has a lot of really good information that you guys need to know moving forward um, into the, the end of this unit. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.